Uh, no, that, that's uh, proprietary. There's no pen. There's no pen. I really dislike this. You'll just yeah. click a button and then shake your head. That's pretty cool. That, that's uh, proprietary. Everything has been checked. I'm going to write a strongly worded letter. Piece of garbage. Wait, what now? No, how does it do that? that that's uh, proprietary. Hey, we're paying for this. You're an idiot. Magic. Uh, no. This is why I'm really good at these videos, because I'm an hey. idiot. Oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to learn a whole new thing. Yeah. All right, guys, welcome back to the Steel Forum. If you've made it this far, you know all about MDM and what it does. Uh, we're going to continue in this one talking about revision control, how MDM can help you through that process, much better than the built-in SDS tools. And we talk about the importance of continuing to learn and grow using any software, uh, really in life. So take a watch, and if you've got any questions, as always, hit us down in the comments, and we'll see you back here in the Steel Forum. So there you go. I'm just entering, you know, uh, 12 inches, add zero, enter. And of course, when you're done. Now, that's, I mean, that's going to happen to everybody, what you're experiencing right now, because I still haven't gotten used to double clicking the grids to open them up. Yeah. I, I still go control O, then open up the grid I want. Does that only, I can't remember, does that only work on the finite grids? Yes. Uh, oh. No. I don't. I don't remember. You know what? Hey, let's do If you change your selection filter to all, or, all yeah. then you can double click the normal, because we don't use finite grids. We hate them. Well, we, we use them when we must. <laughs> yeah, you can use this. You when have when to, they're skewed, essentially. Yeah. You can... Even I turned it infinite. I put my cursor on the, the grid name, double click, and it opens it. Okay. Yeah. I've always, I, I, I still have this argument with SDS2, not that they're going to change anything or that they're arguing with me, um, but I'm having this argument with myself and playing SDS2 side in it. A view and a column line, grid line, are not the same thing. They're not interchangeable. Those are different things. Say that again. A, a view... And a column. So, so a, a, say you've got line. grids one through ten, A through Z, and mm -hmm. th those are grids. Yes. Then you've got section one, section two, section three, roof framing right. plan. Those are views. Right. They I don't know why they mixed plan. those two things. Yeah, oh, I understand. I've, I've never understood that. that. Yeah, it, they are. Hmm, can I, I can't tell you the amount of times and. Everybody in the company and anybody who has to deal with my models hates me because I constantly forget to check the button that says view placement. only placement only instead of you know primary or second right okay so yeah i love it about this left or nick's been on it and i've got section one through 50 and they're all primaries and it's like yeah i'm gonna right. run this plan well I, uh, let's see sorry I remember uh okay so it looks like it's uh 2018 you can change that on the fly yeah yeah Oops. So, okay. Sorry. Yeah. That, so we, yeah, we digress. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just going to move this over, uh, reference points or whatever, 12 inches at zero. Uh, I'm, still, I'm still a guest. What did I, I <laughs> uh, select? Did I not select it properly? Move members. Exact point 12 at zero. How come it's, there we go. Uh -huh. So I confirm the move, I make my changes. So again, some things here, like I, I don't know why I get this warning. This is SDS2. It's move didn't affect any other members. It's only the members here. Why am I getting the warning? So Somebody deep inside SDS2 gets paid by the warning message. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know who it is, but they are making some bank. <laughs> okay, so at this point, I've made my change. I would run the update system tool. You know, uh, of course, I'd make my change. Uh, I have to go through that checking process again, depending on where I am. So here, let's just say, uh, you know, some of them don't need to be detailed, but uh, you know, I'm just going to go all the way through it. Now, of course, I would detail it, you know, if they're, uh, 
how can I put this? You know what? Uh, maybe I should just bring them all through release for detail. Well, just imagine I've checked the, uh, let me unsign that. I was say you need to use the multiple update for yeah. right? Okay. So I'm gonna actually read detail those members. There's no changes for the mark, but if for whatever reason, if there was a, a cha such a change, I'd have broke it apart from another member. Now there's you know a new mark to be used. You would ask me. Just going through, I'm just checking my. Ah. So I'm gonna re-detail it. Of course, I'd open that detail. You know, this, I don't use SDS2's revision tool. Okay. Do you know about, you know about the revision tool? I do. We know we hate it. Yeah. Uh, maybe I, I'm not a biggest, I'm not, I'll be po politically correct. I'm not the biggest fan of the revision tool. Yeah. This, this we mentioned in our video. Yeah. Course. It's, uh, I don't know anybody who uses I, Everybody uses the table because it's great. Right but the tool itself is too complicated. And if you make a mistake, you're, you know, you're out of luck. Well, I'm really like, as soon as she showed me that whole, you know, it, it saves both versions is I'm just right. imagining automating the overlay tool in Bluebeam and being just like, okay, poof, here's what, what looks different from day one. Okay, so on the detail, I would add in what I would normally add for a revision, you know, the holes were moved, et cetera. So I'm just gonna save it. Just I mean, I don't have to show you how to do revisions. Uh, so at this point, I'm just gonna make sure I read through. So once it's finished, I can select the right items. I'd return here and select it and finalize it. So it's finished. So at this point, it's finished. Now, of course, I still have other things to do. I have to go into my PDF. So you'll see my new sheets are there. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put them on, uh, print the copy. So they weren't on this column to load on a sheet because they're already on a sheet. So I forget which one I changed, 105. So just to show you, when I open it up, I have the option to open the original drawing as well. And there we go. So that's the original one, and it's given the revision name to the PDF. And of course, the new one with my changes. Nifty noodles. So of course, at this point, you know, you'd go through the normal, did I close this? Yes. Ah, no, I don't want to save nothing. No, there we go. So I would still go through those, you know, to move it to the be rechecked and through the file check as normal. So now that revision is done. I also, I always remember the tool. Can I pause just for a second there and interject? Is there a way for me to tell it this is a revision that I need to be paid for versus one that I don't uh, need to be paid for? The only thing that I could think of is, uh, where's that attachment? Is the way you name it, perhaps. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, put it in that description. Yeah, it may be a, you know, Rev001 rev versus Rev001 X. T a, or X. Put a dollar sign next oh, to the name. Because also, uh, I would suggest a naming convention because you have internal revisions and ex external revisions. What I mean is I'm not finished the member yet, even close to it in the model, and I get a revision for it that's more internal. Yeah. It's not going out for approval. So you have, you know, uh, UX versus TX. Uh, so yeah, just get a naming convention going. United Structural is all about naming conventions. We have naming conventions for all of the things. Perfect. Uh, one other As thing. should everybody else. If you don't have naming conventions out there for whatever reason, stop it. You're asking for chaos. You are asking for chaos. You're asking to for your favorite detailer to fall down a well and then you'd be lost as to where everything is and then you're going to cry and you're going <laughs> to say Nick told me to be better and I failed. <laughs> uh, so we also have of course a revision report so I can get 
you know, the report in regards to that revision, just a simple text document as to what was done on which members and of course, uh, and that's the date. That's a fantastic backup for when somebody says, why is the bill so high? Yep. Here's the laundry list you made. All I did was change the radius and the work point. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have affected that many people. <laughs> Um, I just want to mention one thing. Of course, since we're using properties, if the user wants to create their own customized report to pull information, you can always do that. Because like I said, the revision, all that information is right here. So let me live out my greatest fear with you with this in software in general. <laughs> is the change where the person doesn't follow procedure yes they change something and they didn't check off that they changed something and now mdm thinks it's released for fabrication but it's not are are there some there are there are certain checks that are being done now of course it's how can i put this it's entirely uh I wouldn't say user friendly, but it's the user who's taking control of a lot of these things. So in my case here, uh, you know, say for this member here, I can send it all the way to being done, done. Okay. So I've overridden any checks that MDM might've done. It's finished this member. As soon as I click, okay, of course I have to put it on a sheet, but you'll notice it's brown. It's still the user has control. So, so this is kind of a Spider-Man situation. Uh, sorry, I, the rebel. Yeah. Uh, with great power <laughs> comes great responsibility. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you, they should. It's similar to anything. Uh, you know, as you saw that detail before, this. Uh, you know, uh, it's Friday. I'm a. Uh, I'm scrubbing the detail. I want to. I don't want to redetail it. Oh, maybe that's why it didn't work before. I changed something I forgot to redetail it. Well, I just want to show you. you saw the detail, it was horrendous. So as a, a two, as a detailer, a 2D detailer, um, you know, I open the detail. Okay, that's eh, I don't like it. I put it on a sheet, sent it for checking. Well, I, I, you know, I shouldn't be doing that. This needs to be cleaned up. But there are there is some control as far as the status thing over, I can see which person signed it. And like, if, yes, you know, my idiot that I don't trust at all signed it, not that that guy should be working for me, but you know, he's my business partner. So I've got to, have to keep <laughs> <it up>. uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me. I won't you, see. You him. realize I'm the one that does payroll, right? <laughs> Jack made me short a few zeros. <laughs> I mean, um, some other person that works for me, some other idiot, uh, says some, I cannot see his checkoffs and like I, I can just focus on mine and say, okay, I believe this to be correct. Or is it once somebody says it's correct, it's correct? Yeah, once somebody says it's correct, it's correct. Now, of course, I mean, that's not to say that you can't go back over the items. That's why we still have that, you know, the, the checking in 2D. Because honestly, if I got that detail as a checker, I, why are you wasting my time? I, you know, something is wrong. And at any moment, so I can see who, I don't know if you can see it very well, but who did what on any detail. And of course, I can break oh, I this down even that. further. What's that? I didn't even notice that before. So that, that tells you who signed off on what the whole way down. The so whole way meant, down. The yeah. turtles all the way down turtles all the way down and i forgot to mention one thing but when i uh, this yeah. this podcast by the way is going to be a gold mine for my new introduction cut <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, for, I just want to mention that uh, uh, the, the, what's that go ahead yeah the revision i don't know if you guys need this but you always have as soon as you start it and soon as, and when I hit that finish or finalize rather, I have the date and the time. Nice. So I can now, say of, how long it took and what I exactly. Had. Okay. 
Now, I, I got a quick question for you because I see you got Joyce in this job, and that reminds me. What do you do for members that need to be in there because you need the connection to work, but you don't care about the rest of it? Because I know that it, it does make sure that you've ah. checked certain things before it'll let you do the related members that are adjacent to it mm -hmm. you know, before they can advance. Right. Uh, now I just got to remember where it was. Uh, oh, yeah. I run the update. Don't select anything. Is I can create... Under preferences, ah, here we go. Say dummy sequences. <laughs> so in this case, I'm putting my Joyce in my dummy sequence. So now Joyce does not appear in anything I'm doing for MDM. I can get it to reappear if I need it, but it's this dummy sequence. You know, sometimes you have to put something like you mentioned, uh, uh, or even a reference model. They send you a reference model. No, SDS2 sees it as something in your model. But if you put it under a reference uh, or a different sequence, you can just tell it, don't pay attention to that reference model. I like that. So is it now going to just assume that any joists that frame to a beam or a column, it assumes that connection is good without me having to review it? Or well, what, okay, when I was to review, okay, that's a horrible example, but let's see here. Do I have anything? Ah, perfect. So this joist is actually entered in the joist sequence that I created. Okay. okay. So now it is in a dummy. MDM will not consider it when I'm doing, say, a, a progress or uh, accounting how, what's been done in the system. But when I check this beam, of course, I'm going to verify that I have holes in it to support the joist. Okay. So, so that check is not done as part of the joist you no. don't have to do a, ch a joist check. That's part of your checking that beam is to see are those connections there. Exactly. Okay. I think there's going to be a whole lot of like learning the the system. And I, I think that's kind of implicit in it. it is, it's just like anything though. Like. True enough. Well, you have to learn SDS in the first place too. So, you know, yeah. you, you've got to learn the software in order to utilize it. People are terrified of it though. I, I, yeah. I, I've never understood it. I, I'm terrified like, of SES2? No, no, no. Of learning. Anything new. Oh, that's new. ridiculous. Uh, I, I, I like to go through life thinking that I don't know nearly enough. So, yeah. you know, it always keeps you hungry for new, new stuff. I learn software all the time. It's I strange know. because I, I share that opinion, but it really conflicts with my inherent arrogance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to feel like you already know everything? Right, right. So and here's yeah. this new thing. Yeah. Oh, I consider myself, say, an expert in SDS2. Mm -hmm. I still have things to learn. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons, like, we share the channel. And it's funny, too. We've, we've talked about this before. But we create a channel and pretend that we're experts. And then everybody's like, oh, you did this thing wrong. And we're like, yeah, we, we, we did that wrong. But here's, here's your next video on here. How yeah, to exactly. Right the next time. <laughs> so there was a little internal conflict at first going up and being like, oh, Here's how you use SDS2 when we don't know any better than anybody else, but as no. we're getting better. That's uh, part of the process of learning. I mean, yeah. Yep. So, I mean, there's, you know, certain things people should know uh, how to run a parametric at the beginning, you know, how to run a parametric, how to run a report. The more advanced stuff comes with time. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, and you've got to put in the effort. It's, it's staggering to, you know, you've, you've been to the user group conferences. Yeah. I, I got up and I did a presentation a couple of years ago on using the parametrics that come with SDS, not writing your own, just the ones that come with it. And I had a filled room of people that just sat there dumbfounded at the wizardry that I was <laughs> demonstrating. What do you mean? You can just run this even spacing for, to connect your uh, construction lines. It's like, this is the simplest of things, but they, they don't want to look into it. You know, it, it's not like the help file was that great to get going with it, but it, it's that sort of thing where, you know, you, you just need to be hungry for that knowledge and, and try to keep moving forward. And you find all of these new features that make your life easier. Yeah. And search the outlets of information. A forum, uh, you guys, uh, YouTube, ask other users uh, that you may know, because uh, there's, a, like you said, there's a lot of information out there. Yeah, that's one reason, and not to sound like a shill, but we do encourage people to subscribe 
because you really, you never know when we're going to, I mean, you might think, you know, all of the things about SDS too. And then we, I, I always thought I knew pretty much all of his things. And right. then we post this one thing and it just makes your life a little bit better. I mean, we use this software so much. Why would you not want to know all of the little things? Exactly. And you know, it's a lot of, it's a big investment. You know, uh, money-wise, time-wise, but you get what you put in. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I think I just want to show one last thing. Okay, absolutely. Live progress. Oh, yeah, I was going to remind you about that. I forgot. So at any time, uh, I remember I, when I was detailing the project manager, you know, we'd get calls from, <coughs> excuse me, the engineer of record or uh, the project manager on the field. Where are we in the project? So at any time, I can pull up this window and see that, okay, you know, all of what's been checked, what's not been checked, I can filter it by sequence. So in this case, sequence 1A is 100% complete. I can get information as, you know, what's been sent for approval, return. I can get uh, uh, weight. So I can do a, I can set the selection. So by selecting that, it's actually... Uh, sorry, shop report setting. I missed something. Oh, the R and the S. So what that simply means is I can get a, say, 20 pre-check done. So when I hit that R, it gives me a quick report or a list that I can save of that individual item. Or let's say I have something that's ready to check. Oh, I have a, I can hit that S and it actually selects it in the model. I can go find that member. So there's a member that's been ready to check in 2D. Why hasn't it been checked? Also, I can get a shop report. So in this case, I only selected sequence 1A. So uh, in for approval, return from approval, uh, a transmittal not return from approval. Uh, in, I don't know why they put the F, but it's in for shop. If I have any addendums or any revisions pending that have been done as well as any uh, RFIs. So, and of course, you still can use that, you know, that uh, attachment tool to attach RFIs. I can also get a summary. So if somebody, where are you on the project? Give me two seconds, and I'm going to hit that button. I'm going to send you an email. Everything is there. I like that. That's fun. Okay, and I already forgot. Oh, yeah, the live progress. You asked me a question. He was about to ask a question. I was. Uh, okay. So when you're doing the live progress, that percentage completed. Yes. What is it drawing against to determine what is 100%? Is that just how much is stick modeled? No. Uh, everything you see here. So okay. all okay. the way to it being finished. So if you remember in the other eye, so, he, uh, so the final check all the way to there. Okay. So it, as far as determining what's 100% pre-check done, that would require you to have 100% of the stick model in before you start yeah. doing any of that checking, right? Right. So okay. if you, so you see if I go to the, I can go to the individual item. So pre-check done in sequence one is 100% done. And there's 22 members. Okay. So I can go down the list. So if I select everything... So as you can see, I'm only 26% done okay. in, th in that. So there are items that are sticked, but they are not pre-checked. Exactly. Okay. Well, I, we don't include stick. Okay. So it's just based on whatever is entered in the model. Oh, we do. I'm sorry. Here's the stick. I thought it wasn't there. Can you just spit out to Excel too, or just the HTML? Just the HTML for now. Have, uh, there is, okay, this one has a bug. There is a, a, a report. I got to remember this one here. You'll kick out an error if I run it. That was just a, an oversight on the user, uh, the programmer. There is, I just got to remember where the report is. Uh, bloody hell. I can't remember. It's just he forgot a link. And it's fixed on the version I'll send out. I just can't remember where the report is. Uh, my preferences. And, you know, and then he told me like uh, last Friday. I can't remember. Yeah. Sorry. Bloody hell. Well, 
it, it's still there. It's just the link for this one is broken. What I send out, oh, I remember, in the find tool. So if I select sequence 1A, print, it's this report. So I can get it in Excel, this one, but I don't have uh, status. the status. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, why not? Uh, I can ask him if I could select the proper icon. Just because like, I'd love to, to be able to type in reasons for, hey, this area is not done because you're, you know, I'm still waiting for connection design or I'm okay. whatever else. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. There's, I'll ask him about that. I don't see, in what format, Excel? Yeah. XLS on up uh, live progress. I'm just writing it down. Because I, I get, you know, I get a lot of requests. Some people want PDFs, some people want Excels uh, for many things in it that we do in the MDM. So we're looking into it. So. Yeah, you know, just like anything, it's. Yeah. It'd be nice. That's that's always we we had this discussion and I don't know if you saw our video what the heck is a PR, <laughs> yeah. uh, but there's there's the there's such a great gap between yeah that'd be kind of nice and I need this feature like yesterday, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just trying to think if I forgot something I don't believe so. There's other things like you mentioned um, for another video the find tool, but I've gone through the basics. All right, guys, that's it for our series with Todd Greening of Magnus Solutions on their MDM software. We know there's a lot of questions still out there, and let us know if you need anything answered. They'll be happy to take care of it for you. Also, we will have an update soon with Todd about some of the features that we talked about, what's new. This video was shot almost a year ago now, so there are some new features coming out, and we're going to do an install video for you as well so that you can see just how to put it in and uh, get everything going. So, as always, if you got questions, hit us back. And we'll see you here. Steal the secret.